very good morning. You're watching Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha TV with me, Tina Jha. Let's start with the headlines. Green Place, Paul Sport at the inauguration of World Culture Festival being held in Delhi. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses the event, calls it the Kumbh Mela of Culture. Fresh transgression by the PLA troops in Ladakh region. Chinese troops enter almost six kilometers into the Indian territory on the 8th of March. Retreat after eyeball to eyeball confrontation with the ITBP troops. Industrial output falls for the third month in a row, contracting 1.5% in January. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley stresses for India to keep the reforms momentum going. Mamata Banerjee releases TMC manifesto for the assembly polls, claims it has fulfilled all promises, promises to expose left Congress unholy alliance. And Pakistan cricket team to arrive in Kolkata for the World T20 tournament today, Mamata Banerjee gives written assurance to provide foolproof security. Well, so the three-day World Culture Festival being organized by the Art of Living Foundation finally commenced in New Delhi last evening. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated the cultural extravaganza. A number of dignitaries, such as the former French Prime Minister Dominic Willipin, Nepal's, uh, Nepal's Deputy Prime Minister Kamal Thapa and UAE's Cultural Minister Al Nahyan were present on the occasion. Thousands of people gathered to witness the spectacle, the first of its kind, despite heavy rains before the start of the event. Take a look. After days of being mired in controversy, the Art of Living Foundation's grand event, the World Cultural Festival, kicked off in Delhi Friday evening. Thousands of artists from across the world are participating in the three-day mega event, which was inaugurated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The Prime Minister called it the Kumbh Mela of Culture, as he spent about two hours there watching some spectacular music and dance performances. He congratulated Sri Sri Ravi Shankar for representing Indian culture on the world stage. Aarke paas wo sanskrutik virasat hai, wo sanskrutik adhishthan hai, jis ki tanas dunia ko hai, hum dunia ke us aavashaktao ko कुछ न कुछ मात्रा में किसी न किसी रूप में हम परिपूर्ण कर सकते हैं हमारी हर चीज की हम बुराई करते रहेंगे तो दुनिया हमारी ओर क्यों देखेगी ह्यूज क्राउड्स थ्रोंग द वेन्यू ब्रेविंग हेवी रेन्स एंड हेल स्टोम व्हिच प्लेड स्पॉल स्पोर्ट एट द स्टार्ट ऑफ द इवेंट the audience was seen taking cover under chairs, tarpaulin sheets and flex boards on the open ground. But the show went on. Hundreds of holy men chanted in harmony and women dressed in red and gold danced to drum beats on the huge stage. We will perform us to our uh, country and uh, in this time, we are uh, visit the best festival in the world. At least all the arrangements are massive. I don't think any, I mean, uh, humility is possible to arrange better than this. The rain has spoiled the game, but it's, it's nobody's fault. More than 35,000 artists are said to be participating in the event, being attended by people from as many as 155 countries. The organizer, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, described it as cultural Olympics. I welcome all of you who have come from far and wide, right from Argentina, Mongolia to Pakistan. There are more than 100 people from Pakistan here. Such lovely people, our neighbors from Nepal. And we are giving such a strong message in today's world when it is so much needed, when, when there is so much gap between communities, between nations, between ideologies, we give them one strong message 
look, we can coexist with our differences. The three-day extravaganza has been cloaked in controversy for days with the environmentalists alleging that the festival spread over 1,000 acres on the Yamuna River's floodplains has done irreversible damage to the delicate ecosystem. And with controversies dogging the event, several dignitaries, including President Pranam Mukherjee, pulled out of it. The event will continue till Sunday evening. A multi-layer security blanket has been thrown over the Yamuna floodplains with as many as 12,000 police officials being deployed. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And on to some news from Parliament now. The Lok Sabha passed the Aadhaar Bill 2016 as a money bill yesterday afternoon. The opposition alleged that the government was attempting to make the Rajya Sabha redundant through this process. The Aadhaar Bill now seeks to give legal sanction to the unique identification number program or Aadhaar as a single window to distribute subsidy and other direct benefit transfers. The question is that the bill be passed. Those in favour may say aye. The Aadhaar Bill 2016 was passed in Lok Sabha on Friday. It was presented as a money bill prompting protests from the opposition. The bill seeks to give constitutional sanction to the Aadhaar number as a single window to distribute subsidy and other direct benefit transfers. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley said provisions had been made in the bill to ensure that personal data was not misused. Honourable predecessor speakers have taken a view that machinery is incidentally created. The principal purpose is the spending of the money and the targeting of that money in a particular manner. So it doesn't lose its character as a money bill. The passage of the bill would save 20,000 crore rupees by avoiding subsidies taken by the undeserving. However, despite the government's assurance, the opposition raised concerns over misuse of users' biometric data. Several MPs also demanded that the bill be sent to a standing committee. Only this card is not for identification, but it is also for other things. So many personal information you have to give. Yeah. So therefore, boy, what harm is there if you refer it to the standing committee? I oppose the Aadhaar bill. I do not suppo support the collection of such sensitive data from individuals of this nation. We are a multicultural, multilingual state. We have a plethora of cards that we can rely on. The government hopes this bill will help fight corruption. That's the reason it wants the bill to be passed quickly. Once a money bill is passed by Lok Sabha, the Rajya Sabha can only discuss it and not make any amendments. It also has to discuss the bill immediately. If not discussed within 14 days of being tabled in the upper house, a money bill is deemed passed. Pranav Goswami's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And in the other headline story of the day, the CBI, which is under fire over its handling of the Vijay Malia issue, has admitted that the notice-seeking detention of the business issued by the agency was an inadvertent error. The CBI is facing flag after questions were raised on how the liquor baron was able to go abroad unhindered on the 2nd of March. That has triggered a political slugfest with the BJP and the Congress trading charges against each other. It had changed the nature of the lookout notice against Malia within one month of issuance from seeking his detention while leaving the country to that of merely providing information about his travel plans. The CBI said that Malia was not found during searches on the 10th of October 2015, after which the agency wrote to the Bureau of Immigration, saying it needs to be issued to ensure his availability for questioning in connection with the 900 crore rupees loan default case involving the IDBI bank. The agency claimed detention under the lookout circular was only possible on the strength of a non bailable warrant against an accused, which was not the case with Vijay Malia. Meanwhile, the Enforcement Directorate has also ordered loans defaulter Vijay Malia to appear before it on the 18th of March. The matter also came up for discussion in Parliament yesterday. The BJP and Congress-led opposition parties exchanged barbs in and outside Parliament on the departure of liquor baron Vijay Malia. In Parliament, the Congress asked how Malia was allowed to leave the country even after creditors of Kingfisher Airlines appealed to the Supreme Court to ensure he stayed in the country. The Congress also demanded a response from Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Finance Minister Arun Jaitley. Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi and Finance Minister must answer to the nation. It must also be answered. Why was the lookout notice of CBI? First was which one was for detention of the person. Why was it toned down to only information notice? Thirdly, 
when a specific information was received on 2nd of March from immigration authorities to CBI that he was leaving the country, why was no action taken? Malia is under pressure from banks to repay nearly 9,000 crore owed by his collapsed airline. In a series of tweets, he however refused claims that he fled India. All the public sector banks should order foreign thing audit to nail down how much money has been siphoned up by these corporates or the people who have taken loan so that the people's money can come back. Malia, who has called himself the king of good times, built his business around Kingfisher beer and co-owns a Formula One racing team. He told his Twitter followers that he travels to and from India frequently and that he was the target of a media witch hunt. The Janata Dal United also demanded that the government intervene in the matter. Malia is a member of Parliament's upper house. He was last seen in the chamber on March 1st. So far, he hasn't disclosed his current location in social media posts. He's believed to have flown to London on a Jet Airways flight on March 2nd. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha Television. And away from politics, there are fresh reports of a fresh transgression in the Ladakh sector. The PTI quoting sources in the security says Chinese PLA troops entered almost six kilometers deep inside the Indian Territory near the Pangong Lake area this week, leading to a standoff between the security personnel of both sides. Now, the incident occurred on the 8th of March when a platoon of at least 11 PLA men led by a colonel rank officer crossed over the imaginary line of actual control at Finger 8 Sirjap 1 area close to the Pangong Lake. The Chinese soldiers entered in four vehicles from across the Taokung border post of India and reached 5.5 kilometers deep inside the Indian Territory. PTI sources also say the soldiers were soon countered and engaged by a patrol of the Indo-Tibetan border police and they were logged in eye-to-eye -eye ball confrontation for a few hours, after which the situation got diffused and the other side retreated. According to reports, the Chinese side was well equipped while the ITBP men were also carrying weapons and equipment for a long-range patrol of the area. The situation along the banks of the 90-square-kilometer Pangong Lake, two-thirds of which is in China, has always remained volatile. Chinese troops are being intercepted by the Indian Army patrol several times after the three-week-long standoff in the Depsang plains of Dolot Beg Oldi in May 2013. And pitching for a deeper South-South cooperation, Foreign Secretary S. Jay Shankar said, development assistance to needy countries should not be judged according to orthodox parameters of donor-recipient relationships, making a veiled attack on China. He was delivering a lecture at a conference on South-South cooperation in Delhi on Friday. Jay Shankar also listed India's development projects in various countries, including in Africa. He reiterated that we do not attach any conditionality and India has always been respectful of the sovereignty of the partner countries. He also highlighted South-South cooperation as an important aspect of India's foreign policy. And Finance Minister Arun Jaitley has said that the need of the hour for India is to maintain its reforms push, addressing the opening day of the three-day conference on advancing Asia, investing for future, Jaitley said that he is hopeful to get through some important measures over the next few months. The Prime Minister addressed the conference a short while ago. IMF Chief Christine Lagarde will also address the conference later in the day. We have integrated in different ways and at different speeds with our neighbours in South Asia, our partners in Asia and our partners in Singapore, Japan and Korea. We intend to continue doing so. My dream is of a transform India. I lay this dream alongside our common dream of an advanced Asia, an Asia where more than half of the global population can live with happiness and fulfillment. The National Monetary Fund is organizing the three-day conference that started on Friday. Addressing the conference, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley said India needs to keep the reform momentum going. 
I think what the challenge before us uh, really is how to keep the reform momentum on, on one hand, take the best advantage of the areas where we are doing reasonably well, and then putting a large part of our national resource in areas where we are lacking. In the wake of some key bills, including the Real Estate Bill Clearing Parliament, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley hoped to get through some important measures over the next few months, riding on popular mood for growth-oriented policies. The IMF has been repeatedly mentioning, and you have more, more than one occasion mentioned that uh, we are amongst the larger economies, the fastest growing one. Hopefully, year 2016 and 17, uh, we should continue to grow at a slightly more improved pace and re continue to retain that position. The IMF said earlier this month it expected India's economic growth rate to pick up to 7.5% in the 2016-17 fiscal year, aided by a collapse in oil prices and relatively low exposure to current global financial turbulence. We'll have the opportunity to hear Prime Minister Modi and his views about India's role, very important role in the region and in the world. Apart from Lagarde and Arun Jaitley, RBI Governor Raghuram Rajan is also attending the event. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And the industrial output fell for the third consecutive month by contracting 1.5% in January, in an indication that the manufacturing sector continues to struggle with sluggish demand and overcapacity. The higher than expected decline was on account of the sharp degrowth in capital goods, whose output shrank 20.4%. Consumer goods output growth was flat as well. IIP from April to January stood at 2.75%, whereas December IIP was revised to negative 1.2%. 10 out of the 22 industry groups in the manufacturing sector recorded negative growth in January 2016 as compared to the same month last year. We'll slip into a short break here on Breakfast News. More news and updates continue on the other side. Don't go anywhere. Thanks to the politicians like Nehru, who understood the importance of mathematics as an intellectual activity as well as for the economic development, they made important financial input into science. One of the quotations from Nehru, it's more or less what he said, I think to some extent, that mathematics is the vehicle of exact scientific thought. Watch Eureka with Professor M.S. Narasimhan, eminent mathematician, only on Rajya Sabha TV. Thanks for staying with us on Breakfast News. The Jawaharlal Nehru University yesterday revoked the academic suspension of its Students' Union President Kanhaya Kumar and seven others in connection with an alleged anti-national event in the campus. The suspension was revoked after a high-level committee of the university probing the issue submitted its report to the JNU authorities. The university, however, clarified that the students have not been given a clean sheet yet. The final decision will be taken after examination of the report by the vice-chancellor. The five-member panel was constituted a day after an event to protest the hanging of Afzal Guru on his third death anniversary was held. Anti-national slogans were allegedly raised during the protest. The eight students were also suspended on the 12th of February. And on to news from the upcoming Assembly elections. The Trinamool Congress has released its election manifesto for the upcoming elections in West Bengal. Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee has said that while the party has delivered in the promises it made back in 2011, it will further push for reforms in the coming years. She also claimed that the people will see through the left Congress alliance, which is only an alliance of opportunism, she says. The Trinamool Congress released its manifesto for the upcoming assembly elections in Bengal. Party chief and West Bengal chief minister Mamata Banerjee said her government has fulfilled all promises made to the people in 2011. <laughs> Banglar Jonogon is Jono, Banglar Mamati Manushi Jono, a manifesto. Ami Utsago Bochi, Banglar Mamati Manushi Jono. 
Mamata also assured that the process of development will gain speed in the coming years. The 142-page manifesto contains chapters on industry, health education, minority development, along with sections focusing on regions like Jungle Mahal and the hills. Mamata also said that she will expose the unholy alliance of the Congress and the CPIM during her visit to Kerala. She charged the Congress with having sold their flag and themselves to the CPIM. <laughs> এবং এর মধ্যেই আমরা লক্ষ্য করলাম যে মুখ্যমন্ত্রী মমতা ব্যানার্জি যেখানে যেখানে সভা করতে গেলেন উত্তরবঙ্গে অবাক হলাম যে যেখানে মমতা ব্যানার্জি আগে গেলে হাজার হাজার মানুষের স্বতঃস্ফূর্ত ঢল নামতো আজ সেখানে মমতা ব্যানার্জিকে মঞ্চের বাইরে বসে থাকতে হয় কখন লোক আসবে মানানসই লোক এলো কিনা তারপরে আমি স্টেজে উঠব মমতা ব্যানার্জির এই দুর্দশা on the other hand, the Congress and the CPIM walked an extra mile to break the impasse over seat adjustments in the state after its leadership held a meeting last night. Congress State President Adi Ranjan Chaudhary said his party was sincere about a tie-up with the left but is ready for a three-cornered contest if such situation arise. The Congress says it is confident that the people of Bengal will give their mandate on what it calls is Mamata's misrule. Six-phase polling for the 294-seat assembly in Bengal will begin on 4th of April and last till May 5. Counting will take place on 19th of May. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Members of a parliamentary panel have favoured drastic reduction in the size of pictorial warnings on tobacco products. The panel looking into the issue is understood to have favoured a reduction of such warnings to 50% from the proposed 85%, saying it is too harsh. Ahead of the 1st April deadline for increasing pictorial warnings on cigarette and BD products from the present 40 to 85 percent, the panel members suggested that it should be 50 percent instead, as the proposed graphic warnings have the potential to severely affect Indian farmers as well as companies. The panel is also learned to have suggested that there is a need to have a balanced approach, as a massive display will result in flooding of illicit cigarettes in the country. Committee Chairman Dilip Gandhi was not available for comments. In the case of BD products, the panel is learned to have favoured pictorial graphic warnings of 50% display size on only one side of the product. The committee also favoured suggesting to the government to stress on education and education generation programmes that have been proved to be more effective and at the same time protect the livelihood of millions of tobacco workers. And some more election-related news in this quick wrap. A three-day crucial meeting of the CPIM to discuss various poll strategies began in Kerala yesterday. One of their main concerns is whether or not to field Marxist veteran V.S. Achutanandan in the 16th May Assembly elections. CPI will also hold its state executive and council meet in Kerala to finalise its candidate list, which is expected to be ready by the 20th of March. Union Home Minister Kiran Rijiju said yesterday that a BJP government in Assam and at the centre will benefit both the state as well as the northeast region. He appealed to the people to give BJP a chance in the upcoming assembly elections in the state. Rijiju also dismissed allegations of the ongoing talks with Ulfa being connected to the polls. Seat-sharing talks by Congress-led UDF in Kerala for the 16th May Assembly polls with minor partner Kerala Congress J is said to have run into trouble. KCJ Chairman Johnny Nello refused to attend further seat-sharing talks, alleging that his party had been insulted. He, however, said that the party representative and Minister for Food and Civil Supplies, Anoop Jacob, will represent the party in the talks. Party cadres were reportedly hurt when Congress did not fulfil their demand for four seats in the upcoming elections. And on to some international news now. German officials confirm that three Paris attackers' names were listed in the leaked Islamic State files. Sami Amimor, Faud Mohammed Agar and Omar Ismail Mustafa had carried out the worst Islamic State attack at the Bataclan concert by Eagles of Death Metal in November 2015, killing at least 90 people. The Islamic State files obtained by Germany, UK and the Syrian opposition media 
identified thousands of jihadist recruits from as many as 40 countries. The details emerged after Abu Hamid, an Islamic State defector, stole the highly conf confidential file and handed it over to Sky News. Now, Germany's Interior Ministry said the information contained in the files could help to prosecute the Islamic State fighters and also help prevent future recruitment. And on to sports news now. After much hue and cry, the Pakistani team is finally coming to India to play in the ICC World T20 tournament. The team is coming to India via Dubai and is expected to land in Kolkata later in the evening today. Pakistan's Interior Ministry has cleared the national men's and women's teams to travel to India for the tournament. The decision came after the government received letters from the West Bengal state government as well as the Kolkata Police Commissioner assuring special security measures for the team while in Kolkata. Due to the delay in travel clearance, Pakistan's first warm-up match against Oman has been cancelled, but the team will take on Sri Lanka on Sunday in its second practice game. Pakistan will play their match against India on the 19th of March. गालबन बुरे हालात थे प्रॉब्लम्स थी लेकिन पाकिस्तान टीम ने जाके बहुत बेहतर परफॉर्म किया पाकिस्तान टेस्ट सीरीज भी जीती वहां पे तो आई थिंक हम लोग कोशिश अपनी पूरी करेंगे जहां तक नेगेटिव की बात करना आई थिंक हमें उठाना पड़ेगा पिक अप करने पर ईच इंडिविजुअल को पाकिस्तान टीम को पूरी को उठाना पड़ेगा तो आई थिंक हम पॉजिटिव फ्रेम ऑफ माइंड से यहां से जाएंगे और कोशिश करेंगे कि बेहतर रिजल्ट्स आए and some other updates from the ongoing tournament. Netherlands and Ireland have crashed out of the ICC World T20 after rains forced their respective matches in Dharamshala to be abandoned yesterday. It was a heartbreak for both Netherlands and Ireland as it was a must-win match for both the teams. Not a single ball was bowled in Netherlands versus Oman's match due to heavy rains. The second match between Ireland and Bangladesh also witnessed the delay because of rain. Winning the toss, Ireland chose to field first in a game that was reduced to 12 overs aside, opener Tamim Iqbal's 47 provided good entertainment to the Sparks crowd that had stayed on patiently as Bangladesh were 94 for 2 after 8 overs when rain stopped play for one final time. Ireland so far managed to collect one point from two matches, while Bangladesh and Oman have three points each in the points table. Friday's no result meant that whoever wins the match between Bangladesh and Oman on the 13th of March will qualify from Group A for the main round, that is the Super 10. Only one team each from Group A and Group B will make it to the main tournament. Afghanistan will take on Zimbabwe today, where the winner will make it to the Super 10. While Hong Kong meets Scotland in the other Group B match, India too will take on South Africa in a warm-up match at the Juan Kerry Stadium in Mumbai. And some more sports updates in the Sports Beat. India's campaign at the All England Badminton Championships came to a disappointing end with Saina Nehwal, B. Sai Praneet, K. Srikanth and Samir Verma all bowing out of the tournament. The London Olympics bronze medalist Saina was stunned by Tai Zhu Ying of Taipei, 15-21, 16-21 in the quarterfinals of the women's singles event to draw curtains down to India's campaign at the tournament. Earlier, Praneet lost to his opponent from Denmark in a three-setter. The highest-ranked Indian Srikanth also was no match for fourth seed Kento Momota of Japan as he lost 10-21, 13-21 in lopsided match. Samir Varma also lost to an eighth seed Tuan Hawaii of China in a three-setter. PV Sindhu and women's doubles team of Jwala Gutta and Ashwini Punappa had made an earlier exit in the opening rounds. Former French Minister for Health and Sports, Rosaline Bachelot has accused Spanish tennis player Rafael Nadal of doping without providing any evidence. Bachelor accused the player on the basis of his absence for months in 2012 due to a knee injury. The former minister explained that when tennis players stop competing, uh, stop competing for several months, they have tested positive for banned substances. Noting that these cases are not regular, but of course very often. According to anti-doping anti officials, more than 60 athletes, including Olympic medalists as well as world champions, have tested positive this year for meldonium, the performance-enhancing drug that Maria Sharapova admitted to using. The drug, which is used for heart patients, AIDS blood flow, was placed on the World Anti-Doping Agency's banned list this year after being monitored by the agency in 2015. 
And that's all we have for you in this bulletin. Thanks for your time.